in our previous module we saw how cells produced cyclic AMP in response to epinephrine and we said that cyclic AMP is going to mediate cause and effect in the cell once the cell has bound epinephrine to its uh, receptor epinephrine receptor let's see what cyclic AMP can do for example in some cells it can activate an enzyme called protein kinase A it is also called cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase or CAPK or PKA one and the same thing the diverse effects of cyclic AMP are mediated through cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase this is a kinase which can attach phosphate groups to specific serine and threonine residues in a protein we know serine and threonine are amino acids once an amino acid has been incorporated in a protein it's called a residue phosphorylation of many enzymes increases their catalytic activity whereas phosphorylation of other enzymes inhibits their activity we'll see examples of both these scenarios first of all let's see how cyclic amp activates pka protein kinase a protein kinase a in the cytoplasm is inactive form if the cyclic amp is not present it is made up of four protein subunits two catalytic subunits two regulatory subunits these regulatory subunits have two cyclic amp binding sites each one and two first of all one cyclic amp molecule will bind one site it will cause a conformational change in this regulatory subunit of pka which will expose the second binding site for cyclic amp it is called the cooperative binding and when that happens the regulatory subunits once they have bound two atp cyclic amp molecules they will detach from the catalytic domains catalytic subunits now the catalytic subunits of pka are active they can go out and do business one of the things protein kinase a does in liver for example as once it is activated it will phosphorylate glycogen phosphorylase kinase it is also an enzyme and as the name suggests kinase it attaches phosphate groups to other proteins it once GP, GPK glycogen phosphorylase kinase is activated it phosphorylates and activates glycogen phosphorylase phosphorylates glycogen which results in removal of one glucose molecule cyclic AMP simultaneously inhibits glycogen synthesis by first of all inactivating or suppressing phosphoprotein phosphatase which is an enzyme which removes phosphate groups from other proteins it is reverse of kinase and pka also phosphorylates glycogen synthase glycogen synthase in its phosphorylated form is inactive here are two examples of two enzymes which are activated by addition of a phosphate group glycogen synthase is on the other hand inactivated and the net result is production of glucose one glucose molecule is released by the liver cell made available to the rest of the body once the pka is response is terminated pka has become inactive phosphoprotein phosphatase is no longer suppressed it removes the phosphate groups from gpks and gps glycogen phosphorylase kinase and glycogen phosphorylase they both lose their phosphate groups and it also removes the phosphate group from glycogen synthase making glycogen synthase active now this glycogen synthase will start adding glucose molecules to the glycogen so it is very important that cells are not doing things which are counterproductive on one side on one hand it is releasing it is degrading glycogen and other system is making glycogen so this is how the system works very beautifully in response to epinephrine in the environment here you can see the structures here for example we have glycogen glycogen synthase adds glucose molecules to the glycogen glycogen phosphorylase on the other hand adds a phosphate group resulting in release of one glucose molecule from 
the glycogen. So this is the overall schematic we, we, which we just saw. The protein kinase A is activated in response to cyclic AMP which is produced by adenyl cyclase which was activated by G protein, the alpha subunit of the G protein which dissociated from beta and gamma in response to epinephrine when epinephrine attached itself to the receptor protein, epinephrine receptor on the liver cell. The cyclic AMP bound, and bound to the regulatory subunits of protein kinase A, the complex fell apart, the catalytic subunits were activated. These catalytic subunits, uh, they, these catalytic subunits then phosphorylated proteins enzymes that resulted in release of glucose from the glycogen. So this is a beautiful system, an example of how G-protein linked receptors work.